I noticed that me and a lot of guys that I know, we do this weird thing. I don't know if you girls do this as well, but a, a guy will sometimes will say some really nice things about our guy friends, but then we will say like one thing that completely takes away all the nice things that we just said. It's the weirdest thing. We'll be like, oh my God, Bill, best guy I know in the entire world. Hates Mexicans, but like other than that, like greatest guy in the entire world. It's a weird thing to do, right? Who's Steve? I would trust that dude with my life. He's not allowed near playgrounds, but other than that, <laughs> like he's like the best guy I know in the world. Tonight on Laughs, Funny Wins, because we have the best comics doing their best stuff from the best clubs. Did I say best enough? I totally, totally meant to. It's time for Laughs. Welcome to Laughs. We've traveled coast to coast to find the best stand-up comics. I'm your host, Taylor Tomlinson, and tonight I am only showing you my favorites. Yeah, it's pretty special. Glad you're here for it. Let's get the show started. Here's Lace Larrabee. I just thought like I was gonna have more at this point in my life. Like I thought I was gonna have, uh, I don't know, like a savings account um, or dignity. I was hoping for that. Yeah. I didn't know I was gonna have to shop at Forever 21 forever. Um, yeah, they should have called it Forever 31 because that's what I can afford. They're great clothes. I love that place. I literally get everything from Forever 21, um, especially because they have like jeans that are $8. And uh, you can't get those anywhere else. Uh, but I know they're not even real jeans. I know they're jeggings. I know there's some hybrid of like denim and plastic because uh, when you walk too fast, they smell like burnt hair. So, um, yeah. Yeah. But that's where I'm at. So. I, I've been trying to deal with like some, some physical changes in a more positive light because I think body positivity is super important. Uh, so I've been trying to look at my body um, in a better way. And I've come up with some things. You can all use this too. Uh, for instance, it's not cellulite that I've got on the back of my legs. That's not it. It's just uh, fingerprints. <laughs> Left over from all the good times I've had. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my boobs, they're not starting to sag a little. That's not it. They're just heavy. Because they're full of secrets. <laughs> Some of you have them, too. <laughs> Lots of secrets. <laughs> Guys, you can do this as well. It's not just for ladies. Guys, uh, your balls. <laughs> they're not getting longer and more disgusting. <laughs> just kidding, they are. They're terrible. <laughs> I, uh, I stream movies illegally on the internet, so that's pretty exciting. I, uh, I recently watched that movie, 127 Hours. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. It was a few years ago. It was a true story. It was about a hiker who got his arm stuck in a boulder, and he had to cut off his own arm to free himself, right? Yeah. Sorry to spoil the movie if you haven't seen it, but that's the whole movie. He's riding a bike, and he gets his arm stuck, and in the next 90 minutes, he's just like... And then he finally nuts up and cuts it off. <laughs> Here's the weird part, he survives. They give him a hook for an arm and this guy continues to hike by himself. This idiot did not learn his lesson. He's still out there. I guess now it's okay, like if he gets his arm stuck in a boulder, he can just screw it off, walk away, pull another one out of his backpack, put that one on. Hike continues, everything's a-okay. Here's why I don't like that movie. At the end, you're supposed to look at this guy like he's a hero because he got hurt doing something that he loves and still continues to do it. What a hero. Every time in San Diego, some surfer goes out there, gets attacked by some kind of water animal or something. Oh, that guy's a hero because he's doing what he loves. Yeah, that guy's a hero. My best friend Jason has two DUIs. He's a douchebag. He's doing what he loves to, I'm pretty sure. Go out and see these comics live. Seriously, get out and support them, or they'll probably turn to a life of crime. For your own safety, follow us on Facebook and Twitter so you can find out when these comics are coming to a city near you. Seriously, it's for your own good. Here's Casey Aurora. I was doing the single thing for a while, that was cool, you know. 
It's only when you're single do you realize what you look like, you know? Like I looked at myself in the mirror and I, I realized, this smoky eye look, I wake up with this every day. I look like I'm wearing mascara now. I look like a raccoon. I look like I tried to rob a bank in the 20s. This is who I am. But I realized something, it's tough to meet people these days. It's not easy, you know? Because everyone has headphones in, nobody wants to talk to anybody anymore, you know? Everyone's just looking down going, why am I alone? Look up. <laughs> like my friend, she's a single gal. She's like, I can't seem to meet anybody. I'm like, you take the train every morning. You take a bus every morning. Take off the headphones, talk to someone. She's like, well, if a guy wants to talk to me, he'll just come up and talk to me. I'm like, yeah, but we're not all drunk at nine in the morning. <laughs> Still difficult to hit on women. It's not easy. Ever watch a guy hit on a girl and fail? Whew. It's like watching a grown man swim for the first time <laughs> and then drown. And not for nothing, but you women are like negligent lifeguards. You're like, we're all the good guys. We're all the good. He's right there drowning. Go get him. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm a celebrity. Didn't you listen to the guy in the beginning of the show? I'm one of the best <laughs> comics in this country. Yeah. Anywhere within three blocks of whatever comedy club I'm working at, I get recognized pretty frequently. <laughs> My favorite time ever happened right here. I was opening up for Nick Cannon. And then three, yep, too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was opening for Nick, and then three weeks after that, I went to the bank around the corner from the club to cash my paycheck, and when I got to the front of the line, the lady working at the club was like, oh my God, you're the dude from the other night. Are you best friends with Nick Cannon? And I was just like, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm best friends with Nick Cannon. That's why I'm still in New Brunswick, New Jersey. <laughs> Three weeks later, <laughs> cashing a paycheck for $129. <laughs> Me and Nick Cannon just super tight, just so tight. I walked in the green room when Nick Cannon was here, and he was just sitting there making music on his laptop, which is a first. No other comedian has ever done that. And I was just like, yo, Nick, what do you want me to say about you? And he just looked back at me and it was like, just tell him what you know about me. And I just looked at him and I was like, I don't think you want me to do that, Nick Cannon. I'm pretty sure you don't want me to go on stage and be like, Eminem has a pretty good song about banging this dude's wife. Give it up for Nick Cannon. Okay, I just checked the lineup. We have so many great comics coming up and one guy that's just like, okay. Stick around to see if we even let that guy perform. I don't know, it's crazy. Laughs will be right back. Welcome back to Laughs. I'm your host, Taylor Tomlinson, and I have great news. The guy that was just like, okay, not that great, he missed his bus, so it's all great comics now. Sorry you missed your bus, Jim. Said too much, shouldn't have said his name. Let's get going with the show. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm getting old though, I'm getting old. 34, I'll be 35 in December, I'm getting old. This is how you know you're getting old. When you wake up six o'clock in the morning thinking about what you're gonna take out the freezer to cook, that's how you know you're getting old. <laughs> like I'm supposed to be waking up with two chicks in my bed and a hangover from partying the night before, but instead I'm waking up with pork chops on my mind. You know, like, <laughs> like yeah, I'll probably fry it tonight, I'll probably bake it. Uh, can't relate to these young women. They're like, it's Saturday night, Trey, what you going to do? We going to the club, what you going to do? I'm be like, I'm about to go home and preheat my oven. I got, <laughs> got some new seasonings I want to try out. That's what I, that's what I want to do. I went to, went to go play basketball the other day. Worst mistake ever. If you in your 30s or 40s playing basketball, the rule is you need to play basketball with people in their 30s and 40s. Stick with your age range. Don't play basketball with nobody younger than you. I didn't get the memo. I went to the gym and was playing basketball with guys fresh out of high school and dudes in their early 20s. One thing about these guys is that they still take the game serious. They still trying to get to the league. Me, I'm not trying to do that. I'm just trying to lose a little bit of this stomach I didn't gain from them pork chops I ate earlier that morning. <laughs> Now, they pass me the basketball, I go shoot a layup. 
I missed the layup completely. Won't nobody next to me. I didn't get fouled. I just shot the ball that ain't going to basket. I didn't think nothing was wrong with it. I got back on defense like you're supposed to do. I turn around, I see the young kids having a meeting about me. Like, man, this old man suck. This old man suck. <laughs> I go to the kids like, where the old man at? They like, we talking about you. <laughs> I was like, man, give me my ball. I'm going home. I give a damn about basketball. I get women. I make money. That's what I do. Matter of fact, I got some pork chops that's finished defrosting right now. I'm about to put in the oven. What are you eating tonight? You know what? We can't have it all as a woman anyway. That's why you got to love yourself. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever noticed all the girls with the big butts ain't got no boobs? You notice that? All the girls with the big boobs ain't got no ass. All the girls with the big ass and the big boobs got a big old stomach to match that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and have you ever seen a girl that's perfect, though? She got the big butt. She got the big boobs. She got a little bitty waist. Have you seen her? Because more than likely, her face is toe up, OK? Because <laughs> you can't have it all. <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. I haven't been feeling well lately. And all my friends keep saying, it's in your head, Christine. You're just stressed out. That's what's happening. You're stressed. I'm like, my nose is running. I don't know if stress causes that. It's not stress. I think my friends could blame anything on stress. I feel like I could get shot and they'd be like, Christine, that's not a bullet hole, that's a stress wound. Yeah, stress formed a hole in your body. And that's not blood, that's stress blood, Christine. You need to do yoga or just meditate. You're stressed out. Uh, I think I do have it together in one area of my life on the home front. I'm a homeowner, so that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really proud of that. It's hard, though. It's a lot of responsibility. I think the hardest part about being a homeowner for me, though, is uh, finding a way to casually bring it up in conversation so that people know that I am better than them. That's, that's really tough. I'm like, yeah, the temperatures are getting pretty high outside, but not as high as my HOA fees. I own a home, yeah. This is a pretty sweet gig. I get to spend time around a lot of funny people. I get to put clips up on our YouTube page and tweet stuff on our Twitter and, you know, all that kind of stuff. I don't really have a point. I just wanted to share this with you. I feel like we're at that point in our relationship where we can just say stuff. We don't really need a point. Kind of nice, right? I'm glad we're doing laughs together. Let's do more. Laughs will be right back. Welcome back to Laughs. I'm your host, Taylor Tomlinson, and I gotta say, we've really hit our stride here. We are in a nice groove. Things are going very well, so let's just keep riding this thing. Let's keep riding that sweet, sweet comedy high. Here's Jarrett Berenstein. I got this one friend, he's taking Krav Maga, uh, which is, uh, Krav Maga, for those of you guys that don't know, is Israel's martial art. It's the official martial art of Israel. And when I heard that, I was like, Krav Maga, how did Israel not get to name their martial art judo? <laughs> right? They couldn't have judo or jujitsu. There were two of them. Couldn't have either one. It's messed up. I got this other friend. He's a, he's a doctor. He's an anesthesiologist. We were on a plane once, and that thing that happens in the movies where they call for a doctor on the plane, that happened to us. We were on the plane together. They called over the loudspeaker and they were like, is there a doctor on the plane? There's a woman in first class who's passed out. Is there a doctor on the plane? And my friend leaned over to me and was like, Jarrett, maybe I should say something. And I was like, dude, she's passed out. You're an anesthesiologist. What do you hope to accomplish up there that hasn't been done already? You go over there and be like, well, she's out. And that's what I do. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Let me know if she wakes up. I'll come back and put her out again. It's hard being a man. Like, you're not supposed to show no weakness as a man. Like, if a little, you're a little boy, you fall down, you're three years old, you bump your head. You, ah, you better not cry, little man, man. You better not cry. And he's sitting there with a shard of glass in his head, talking about you better not cry. Wondering why he's 21, beating up people at the club, robbing people. He ain't cried. 
He went his whole life ain't cried. He done watched Mufasa die and he ain't cried. <laughs> if they played that in here right now, I'd have to excuse myself. That's how sad that part of that movie is. <laughs> you can't get hurt. You twist your ankle, you gotta score the game winning touchdown. I'm just saying this because I lived in a world where they tell you you ain't supposed to take medicine because you're a man. You sick, you're supposed to deal with it. I'm serious, man. I, I'm telling you all this because this is what happened. I had a scratchy throat and a runny nose. And my girl saw this and she was like, oh, baby, is you sick? And I'm like, I'm a little bit sick. I'll be all right, though. <laughs> and God must have heard this because he turned this thing into the swine flu. It, it, it quickly evolved into something else. It was crazy. Like, I'm sitting at the house now. I'm talking about I got the cold sweats, my body aching all over. Every time I cough, it felt like somebody was stabbing me in the chest with something. I'm laying there in the bed. I'm talking about I was aching so bad, it took me literally 20 minutes to turn from this side of my body, right, to this side of my body, to reach over and grab my phone and text my girl and say, bring me all the medicine you can find. I need it all. She like, I'm about to bring you some NyQuil, some DayQuil, some Halls. I'm like, see, you playing. I need something strong. I need you to bring me chemotherapy over here, okay? I don't know what I got. Come amputate my foot off. I start getting delusional. I'm like, you know what? Forget that. I'm about to book you two tickets right now on Travelocity. I need you to get on this plane and fly out to Japan and meet up with this dude. His name is Goku. He got seven Dragon Balls. I need you to help him find these Dragon Balls and some Sensu beans and wish me back to health. I'm about to die. I'm scared. And if that don't work, I need you to fly over to Italy and meet this one guy. He's a plumber. He's Italian. His name is Super Mario. Now, when you get over there, <laughs> have Super Mario take you to World 1-1. When you get to World 1-1, I need you to find a power-up. Get a star, get a big, get the little thing that make you throw fire, but don't get that little leaf that turn you into a raccoon. That's racist as hell in my mind. I don't know why. You take this little leaf and you can jump all of a sudden and you a coon. I don't appreciate that for some reason. <laughs> don't get that. Now, when you get this power up, I need you to go get into one of the little war pipes. Go, ew, you're going to go down. You're going to come up. Don't be scared, all right? It's going to be quick. When you come out, it's going to be a little goomba walking around, a little mushroom thing. Jump on them, all right? They're going to die instantaneously. They ain't scary. Walk over two blocks over your head. Hit your head on one of them blocks. Some coins going to come out. Don't get the coins, greedy bitch. That ain't what we came here for, all right? Don't get the coins. Now you gonna move over to the next one. Hit your head on that block. A green mushroom gonna come out. That's a free man. Bring that free man back to me cause I'm about to die. I need another life, okay? Break time. We have about 14 seconds of commercials and then we'll be right back. That's assuming that you fast forward through all the commercials, of course which you 100% shouldn't do, okay? Comedy costs money, and we need these adult diaper ads to pay for them. Laughs will be right back. All right, nobody goes home until we hear what Tom Simmons has to say, okay? He is an artiste, he is a wordsmith, he is a purveyor of... Unleash the Simmons! <laughs> so then, there's this. A Cuban-American Texas man, Ronaldo Rivera, stabbed his roommate to death after eating his last piece of chicken right out of the hot pan. So it was out of the frying pan and into the morgue for that roommate. An investigator at the scene was quoted as saying, <laughs> Come on, how is this a crime? A man isn't allowed to defend his own property? I mean, just to clarify, this was a full-on drumstick. It's not like he got all stabby over a wing. Who wouldn't break out some original recipe whoop-ass over a delicious drumstick? He got what he deserved, you ask me. And Rivera, he was just following the marching orders from his military advisor, Colonel Sanders. He wouldn't be in this mess if he'd just listened. He was supposed to destroy the evidence and commit arson too. The Colonel always gives side orders. This story shows just how racist and wrong it is to see chicken and think black people. The correct racist stereotype was knife and Latino. I mean, now obviously I feel bad for the victim, but if you're gonna die over chicken, at least this way is less painful than salmonella. And if I was a judge, I gotta be honest, I don't think I could decide this case until I actually tasted the chicken. I mean, what if I had one bite and it was so yummy, I was like, not guilty! I mean, hell, I'd kill for this chicken. Bailiff, clear the courtroom. Lunch is now in session. And make sure my wife gets this recipe. I mean, this is so good, it'll make you slap your granny. 
Yes, we did it! Another perfect show! How do we keep doing this? It's a comedy dynasty. Ah, let's see if we can do it again next week. Keep tuning in. I'll be here. Contractually obligated. Wow, such a good show. Legend. See you next week. It's not me, Tube. It's not us, Tube. It's you, Tube, okay? Pull your weight. Like and subscribe so I can bring more goodness to your tube. That did not sound right. I am so sorry. I didn't know where I was going with that, and it went to a bad place. Just forget about your tube.